Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to the tech to youtube channel. Although we don't have a lot of them on the market, the popularity of the M.2 SSDs is slowly on the rise. Their interface represents an alternative solution for the SATA interface when we talk about the overall bandwidth and some of the manufacturers decided to take advantage of that to unleash the full performance of their high-end NAND flash and controllers, one of them of course being the Samsung with their 950 Pro M.2 NVMe model. As you can see, here I have two different models, or to be more precise, capacities, 512 and 256 GB ones, and that's about it for now, as they don't have any other capacities to offer. On the front of the box, you can see a picture of the M.2 module itself, while on the back, a notion of the 5-year warranty, and that's about it in regards of information worthy of mentioning. Opening up the box, in this bottom compartment there's a small booklet with user manual and warranty information, while opening up the top part you'll get to the SSD itself. The M.2 SSD modules are generally pretty bone dry so to speak, and so are these, very simple in their construction. Here we have the PCB itself, NAND flash chips, controller and some other components on it, and a connection point on the top, this one being the M.2 M key edge type of connector, enabling connection of up to 4 PCI Express lanes. Speaking of the components, for the NAND flash we have the Samsung's 40 nanometer MLC VNAND chips, while managing them is also the Samsung's UBX controller. Don't be fooled by the high manufacturing process of 40 nanometers, cause Samsung's NAND flash is a completely different story when it comes to their VNAND, which is bottom line a 3D flash memory technology, now in its third generation, which stacks 48 layers making high density and high performance chips. Putting that aside for a second, you're probably wondering what does NVMe in the name of these SSD stand for. To simply put it, NVMe is a step up from the AHCI protocol. It brings in lower latencies, greater Q depth number and more efficient communication with the CPU on multiple core level, overall resulting with better performance potential. I'll actually do a more detailed overview and comparison of those two protocols in a future video, so stay tuned. Finally, I've put these two beasts to the test. First scenario of benchmarking that I did, just for the fun of it, is on an M.2 slot on my Gigabyte X99UD4 motherboard, which has only 10 gigabits of bandwidth reserved for the M.2 connection. In theory, that's around 1250 megabytes per second of bandwidth, but as you can see it here, I got only around 600 to 800 megabytes per second for the read speed on the 512 gigabyte drive. I skipped the testing of the 256 gigabyte model here and brought out the big guns, this PCI Express 3 3.0 X4 M.2 adapter. With it I was able to fully unlock the performance of both modules since it offered 32 gigabits of bandwidth through the PCI Express 3.0 X4 slot on the motherboard. If you have a newer model of Z170 motherboard or even some of the latest models of X99 motherboards, you'll probably have an M.2 slot that has PCI Express X4 enabled on it and thus also having 32 gigabits of bandwidth, which in translation means that you do not need this PCI Express adapter. Looking at the benchmarking results, you can see that I got some pretty bonkers results. Around 2.5 GB per second for read speeds and 1.7 GB per second for write speeds. Being it either with compressed or uncompressed data handling, the Samsung's M.2 NVMe 950 Pros teared everything apart. IOPS figures were also high in the skies, unreachable for the regular SATA 2.5 inch SSDs. Of course, this so to speak premium product will set you back for around $180 for the smaller model and around $300 for the larger and that's over double in price compared to the regular offer. All of this is to some degree understandable, but the thing is that for majority of users a classic 2.5 inch SSD is more than enough even in extreme cases. The real life performance difference between it and the M.2 is probably next to negligible, so at least for now stick with your usual choices. Once the NVMe M.2 and M.2 in general become more affordable, I'll be more than happy to recommend it, since besides its performance, this format is way more practical in the sense it keeps the chassis inside completely clean looking.
That's it guys for this time, thank you once again for checking out the unboxing and review of the Samsung's 950 Pro M.2 NVMe SSDs. Feel free to give us a thumbs up if you like this video, leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the product and of course if you would like to see more content like this you can subscribe to our TechTix YouTube channel or you can just check out our other videos from before.